right below all good branch again the place where i put in normally it's a long dirt road to get in there but they're doing a lot of work a lot of wind though don't know what we'll get though fellas it is windy we, we just can't i mean so many waves and stuff water's getting in the boat and all that i always check the weather before i come here weather reports are worthless they don't know what the heck is going to happen they were talking about one mile an hour winds <laughs> it's like 30 mile an hour winds out here i'm telling you i've been out here before in these conditions it's in the 60s and i'm having to wear my windbreaker on top of my base layer and my insulating layer just because the wind is moving so much it's chilling you i may need to get two drift socks off the bat but we just can't get slow enough and this week's been a real bad week although it's the new moon and tuesday would have been the perfect day to fish problem is it was all raining and thundering and lightning and stuff and quick tip if you're in a windy conditions in a small boat like this keep your weight low and centered don't be sitting off to this side or that side don't be standing up keep your weight low and centered and you won't have to worry about capsizing i had to learn that the hard way too <laughs> actually the first trip out in this boat i capsized it believe it or not learned a whole lot that day not sure how much wind you're getting but it's just it's just killer and i, I doubt if i catch anything today Tell me, I just had something, but yeah, he's on there. <sighs> Seriously? <sighs> he hung up. Come on, don't go that way. We lost more leaders today than we have anything, so. But we caught something just inside this point where all that wind, I'm guessing that wind's washing whatever bait. Come on, no, off. We just lost the hook, the uh, bait. See that point? That point is where we're, I got my first bites and stuff. First catch, fellas. I don't think I'm keeping her. <laughs> I rarely ever throw a bluegill back, but that one. <laughs> it's time to go tell your mama to come on and get something to eat. So. I think we got another catfish. This part of the lake is deep, man. I'm just probably 60 foot deep here. We're in some holes. We're fishing holes. I don't feel anything now. No. But that was a hit. Oh, that was definitely a catfish. Didn't have him hooked. Because there's slime on the line. Right here at the dock. Ain't caught anything all day long. Looks like we finally got something. Little uh, little spot. Right in the corner of the mouth too. He came on the crystal flash. One sandwich. <laughs> you kidding me? Are you kidding me? No, 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 no. No, it didn't come off good. Somebody was asking me, how do you do this hopefully you can hear me Ooh. how do you do this all there's all kinds of trees back in here I mean, you can feel them that's why you use the pattern oster but you're fighting in the same way here we're in reverse try to get back out over the main creek here I used to come fish this when I was in college actually but never caught anything except when I was coming off these rocks I'd have to hike all up top this ridge here we got a hybrid. I think they grow them in the uh, lab and they introduce them to the waters. A broken pattern, that's a that broken pattern. That's a pretty dead giveaway that it's a hybrid. Ant fly tipped with a night crawler. You know, stripes, hybrids, yellow bass, those are all what they call white bass. And then spotted bass, largemouth bass, smallmouth bass, what they call black bass. And, oh. The Soluna calendar said that this time of day, it was about 3.30 here, about 3 o'clock, 3.30, it was going to be the better time to fish. And sure enough, here we are in this back little cove, hadn't had any bites all day, and all of a sudden, we're catching fish. Why? Because this is exactly where the Soluna calendar, so that Soluna calendar is proving its money's worth, you know.
is proven more valuable to me than even like a sonar or something. I don't really need sonar with the way I fish because when you're trolling there's a direct link between what's going on with the river bottom and my hand I don't the, my brain is interpreting the data instantaneously although I can't visually tell you necessarily what it is there's an association oh there's a little hump right here oh it gets a little deeper right here oh that feels like a little tree branch right there oh I can't feel the bottom oh there must be weeds right there See, all that information is being cataloged and inter in internalized in my brain. And there's no way that a, a stupid computer can interpret all that for me. Now, some people are really good with their electronics. Um, and that's okay. But I guarantee you there's a period in their lives where they spend a lot of time interpreting what all that data means. Which is exactly what I'm doing here. I'm just doing it the old school way as opposed to with the sonar. Uh, no electronic piece of equipment can replace time on task, paying the dues, getting out here to understand what's going on, right? If you don't, if you don't have the understanding, it doesn't matter how much money you spend and how much technology you put into your stuff. Each fish hits differently. Bluegill are pretty easy because they they're real sharp pointed bite. Catfish, if it's a blue cat, it's a it's almost like a yo-yo. Look up how trout fishermen troll, and it's very similar. Um, you see how some of these guys troll, and it's very, very similar to what I'm doing. Only difference is, is I'm just in warm waters, and they're in cold water. So you're always adjusting the depths. I'm never just sitting there. It's not like you're just putting a rod in a rod hole and just sitting back with your hands behind, tucked behind your head. Oh, crap, we're stuck on up. Are you kidding me? And once again, the Soul Lunar Calendar is proving its worth. Let's talk to some of these tournament bass fishermen guys who spent tons and tons of time practicing. Can they, when they're fishing on the bottom, can they feel the difference between weeds, gravel, sand? You'd better believe they can, because they spent the time. You know, you'll see, you'll feel the difference in the texture of the bottom, and it'll be a lot better for you. But anyway, fish here, we're gonna go ahead and call it quits. I mean, we didn't get skunked. And I need to get going on that wooden prototype, finishing that out. Again, this is just going to dry rot, and so I need to get the wooden one finished up. And uh, Someone wanted one, and I need to get, get going on it, and that's probably what I'll work on tomorrow. For those of you who have been watching these videos, uh, thank you. Thank you for watching them. And uh, those of you who know, I quit my day job. I'm just fishing like this, catching my food that way. And if any of you like the channel and you want to support the channel, you can support me on Patreon. It's a website that is, allows artists and creative type people to raise money for what they're doing. And I have some rewards that you get, you know. And if you want to buy my products, you can get on Amazon and type in Black Warrior Lures. You'll see the, all the products that I have there. Or you can get on my website, blackwarriorlures.com, and you can check out the various products there. Watch the video, click on some of the ads, you know, you can help out that way as well. Even just commenting on the videos is what good, because, uh, you know, I generally like talking with people and chatting with people online. Those are the different ways you can help with what we're doing here at Black Warrior Lures, and I certainly appreciate you guys, and uh, I'm going to head to the house.